uh, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our session two. That's incubators perspective on technology adoption and challenges. We have two chairpersons for this session. Mr. Samir Mehta, the vice president of CAHO, is a very known personality and a good friend. Mr. Mehta is the chief investment director of the Atlas Family Office and the vice chairman of Dr. Mehta's hospitals in Chennai. Samir is the co-founder of a number of entities, including India Home Healthcare, Arya Play Games, Atlas Intelligence, and participates on various national healthcare and investment advisory committees. He is the member of the Institute of Directors, the Indus Entrepreneurs and Entrepreneurs Organization, EO. We have our next cha chairperson, who is uh, Mr. Avinash Aradhya who is a second-generation family business entrepreneur inspired to contribute to improving healthcare. He co-founded Health Minds to work with uh, artificial intelligence, AI, medtech, and pharma companies with research and data analytics, medical writing and communications, clinical data management, validations, trials, and pharmacovigilance. He is an engineer alumnus of the Purdue University, mainly dealing with artificial intelligence and social impact projects is where his key areas of interest are. I will go ahead to introduce the speakers also before I hand over to our chairpersons. Mr. Sanjeev Malhotra is the CEO of, for IoT and AI NASCOM and as head of the NASCOM Center of Excellence and Artificial Intelligence. He has been spanning four locations in Bangalore, Gurgaon, Vaisak, and Ahmedabad. He's currently building the innovation ecosystem with startups, corporates, government, and academia, focusing on emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, etc., in the application of healthcare and life sciences. And for this, I hand over to the chairpersons of this session. Over to you, Sam and Avinash. Thanks, Anna. Uh, I think uh, we're all, we've been looking forward to Kahotech for a long time and uh, I so wish we could have done it in person, but that's not the case this year. The reason we're sitting here today is so that our tomorrows are better than our yesterdays. And I think in many ways, this specific session is a testament for that. We would not have had this, if you rewind the clock, 80 years ago when Dr. Mehta's was set up uh, in 1933. Uh, we didn't have incubators. We didn't have the concept of accelerators. In fact, if you even look at 10 years back, we didn't have too many in the health technology space. I think the first one at IIT Madras and perhaps IIT Bombay and Delhi were starting to see their earliest days. And I think the reason we're doing that is the reality is most in health, in most industries, startups and making an entrepreneurial success of any venture is tough. They say over 50% fail within the first five to 10 years. The reality, I think, personally in healthcare is that we'll be lucky to see 20% succeed. And that's why I think having these accelerators and incubators to help us with those earliest of steps, the highest of riskiest of steps makes a big difference. And especially in technology ventures, that are related to health, because whether you're doing B2C, going directly to consumers, trying to do a platform, whether it's telemedicine, whether it's some sort of uh, health booking, whether it's some pharma or drug management system, uh, or even ordering, those are areas where you need to understand your customer, make sure your user experience is well met. When you start going B2B, either selling to hospitals or clinics or doctors, right? That's a very different beast. In India, we may have 80,000 hospitals on paper. We may have 30,000 registered with insurance companies. But the reality is I call, India has some maybe 10,000 hospitals with some sort of recognized leadership team. Uh, if you look at beyond that, which have IT departments, you're starting to go divided, right? So it comes down to around 3,000. Navigating these weird pathways needs help. And that's why we have three wonderful speakers. We have folks who are deep in medtech. We have folks who are deep in digital health. And more importantly, we have folks who do a combination of B2B and B2C. And I think that 
melding together of these different components in the early phase of a life of any venture helps. Uh, and I think with that, let me pass it to Avinash and perhaps he'll give a little bit more glamour to it and then we'll allow our speakers to come and uh, add some spice to the day and make our tomorrows better. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so it's with the same spirit um, that we were, uh, you know, talking about uh, that to assist uh, the startups, uh, you know, as in their initial days. Uh, you know, Kaho has also set up um, the uh, technology committee uh, and, uh, you know, to help uh, in, and engage with uh, incubators and uh, startups in, in engaging with uh, hospitals whether it is with proof of concepts or, uh, you know, in helping them uh, reach out to all the hospitals at large. Uh, and um, I, I'm a new member to Kaho and it has been a very exciting journey for me as well uh, to learn uh, about the organization and uh, with the energy and uh, the spirit with which uh, they're working. And, um, and um, uh, without uh, taking more time away from the uh, panel members, uh, I would like to uh, take the I'd like to invite um, our first uh, speaker, Mr. Sanjeev, uh, to uh, speak a few words and then we'll take it forward. Thank you so much. Uh, so glad to be here uh, among the uh, such learned and uh, accomplished people, you know. Um, so uh, as, as it was said, you know, this incubators, accelerators is a, is a concept now. It's been there for now. Uh, more than 10 years and these, these are continuing to grow. And in my opinion, uh, it is a good thing. I think uh, having more of these things is, is, is definitely a requirement of the day. Um, I come from a technology background and, uh, and we run a program, you know, which is uh, uh, focusing on nurturing new innovation and also getting it adopted. So we have a twofold approach towards it, you know. Um, and uh, now being part of NASCOM, you know, one of the strengths that we bring to the table is uh, building an ecosystem, bringing a lot of people together. Uh, the way at which the rate at which technology is growing, uh, it is very important that we bring people of uh, uh, different backgrounds and strengths together. You know, while somebody may be good at technology, there is a domain knowledge which is equally important in this, right? I mean, uh, to think that I will be able to develop a solution and get it adopted without doctor's consent will be a, uh, I can continue to dream in my room, <laughs> you know, so uh, that is very extremely, uh, that is extremely important to, to bring people with different backgrounds uh, to create that ecosystem and, and that is what we are focusing on, that's where we work with organization, even Kaho, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, Sam has been part of our uh, initiative and he knows a lot about what we, uh, some of our initiatives and he's been participant in that, and we value that participation coming from the domain, right. Uh, we we work with startups who are uh, who can use our infrastructure labs to develop the products. We work with universities because a lot of uh, you know learned people as we have you know people from uh, IIT Bombay and Madras. We work closely with them, and in fact, one of our centers is located in IIT Gandhinagar, uh, and and uh, uh, and they're important part of the ecosystem. Now, to talk about some of the journeys of the startups who have joined us, you know, um, have faced uh, issues of uh, all kinds and, and we have connected and had their solutions adopted in some of the hospitals, in some of the large corporates, especially during COVID times, you know, a lot of people were saying we want contact, contactless technologies. Uh, bringing the right contactless technologies to, to, to their applications finding the right solution and making those, uh, uh, reducing their time to market for the large companies is one of the things we do. And it's a win when the large companies get a, get a solution and so do the uh, startups, they find a customer. Uh, we also run a program called Healthcare Innovation Challenge. And uh, that's where we bring in all the healthcare service providers, or sorry, healthcare uh, all the hospitals uh, who who are uh, who actually have a requirement in all fronts, whether it is uh, patient centric or it is uh, uh, related with after after care, you know, from the time they leave, and or or it is to do with while they're in the hospital. Uh, there are solutions that that have we have opened up to the startups, and some of the solutions have uh, seen light of the day. Uh, 
uh, and and I can tell you even in the large companies also people who have used AR VR solutions for remote monitoring, uh, people who have used as uh, I talked about contactless technologies, and there are people who have used uh, in the, during the COVID times also of the remote installation of new equipment that you cannot do while sitting uh, or where the access was becoming difficult. Um, so so this is the broad spectrum of things that we do. Uh, we are also into helping the startups to find the right investment. We are invested, uh, connected with the investment community. Uh, and of course, the large IT companies who play an uh, important role and contribution into uh, providing some of the technology and expert uh, technology expertise, as well as some access to um, um, some, some large markets as well. So, so this is the broad summary of that. I'll get into more details as we go along. And uh, so back to you, Avinash. Thank you, uh, thank you. Look, I, I think we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. But when we meet a lot of the entrepreneurs that are there, a lot of them start coming to us either from a hospital side of view or an investment side of view. And they say, give us the money, right? Uh, without a lot of proof of concept, Mm -hmm. And that we're finding a, a high amount of challenge that especially in early stage digital health, which seems to have much higher valuation uh, interest at the moment, mm -hmm. or in med tech, which has really long gestation periods. Right. Uh, we have, we seem to see these two patterns. One is that the main ask is money rather than the main ask being give us help to get to a stage gate that proves to customers that we have a useful product. I think that's one. The second thing is typically around uh, pricing of the product, right? When you bundle a product and you bundle services, most of the folks, especially around things like digital health, which perhaps you can distribute or aggregate around many customers, that ability to concentrate and think ahead saying that, look, let me get some early customers. Let me not be too expensive on them. That model doesn't seem to have quite percolated. Why is that? Well, one, one of the things is it is also the environmental factors, right? I mean, there is quite a bit of money in circulation right now, right? I mean, if you talk about the funding raised by some of the startup stories that we hear about, especially these uh, uh, B2C type of a thing, right? I mean, they are raising money like... <laughs> Uh, you will not have any logic to explain the way they raise money, right? And the amount of money they raise. Obviously, then, then that also uh, sets some precedence to say that hey, why should if we get that, we will be able to grow at a level uh, at which they are doing. So I think it's just a mindset thing. Secondly, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, availability has gone higher. Also, I mean, there is money available in the system. And, and they say, why not ask that? But you're right. I think it requires a little bit of guidance and mentorship to them to say that the more important thing is to actually get your product uh, validated and accepted and rest will all fall in place. Uh, so I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, while there may be some genuine cases of requests for money also, uh, well, if you get money, definitely you can buy a marketing machine and go to all these places also. But I think the first thing first is to get your... Uh, product uh, completely validated and accepted. And, and, and I think that will be the right priority. Because in digital health, we're starting to see a pattern of founders connect, right? Health tech, in our opinion, whether it's digital health or whether it's med medical devices, seem to need more complex teams to operate and succeed. They're not simple teams. And this is something we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening and technology companies listening on this call. So that's something we really want them to take away. How do you put, put together these teams where the entrepreneur groups or the founder groups evolve over time as the maturity of the project gets closer to the market or the customer? So, so you're right. I mean, it is, it is a, a mix of skills that are needed to get a product developed, right? I mean, and, and different things, different strengths needed at different stages of the, as the company evolves. Uh, what we are good at is, you know, as I said in the beginning is to bring people together. You know, we aggregate things. We have a technical team where we are not focusing on developing products, like maybe in the cases of IIT Bombay or Madras, but seeing whatever is out there, how to bring the best of the two together to bring a better result, bring startup and corporate together to bring a better result, or 
some of the cases you know even put uh, two startups together that they can jointly work towards some of the problem statements also while we have people we work in a close community of inside our labs we have our own labs and and some of these startups do work together and some of them which are very good at hardware don't know how to do ai modeling for example and vice versa there are people who are doing ai modeling need some small hardware product they don't know how to go about developing that part that's where we help them bring the right partners also some of these some of these things can be outsourced uh, and and that's where i think the the greater value you can derive from the ecosystem um, uh, and 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 i believe that there is a no need to reinvent the wheel every time you know there are already things a lot of things are already developed I mean, there's everybody starts developing the same thing again and again probably does not make too much sense right and and if we can leverage each other's strengths i think that is the best best option uh and that is the model of co-creation we create also right i mean even some of the models that we do is you know while the one stethoscope is being developed for example in iit madras another stethoscope digital stethoscope may be developed in some other place xyz right now there may be a user who is looking to get something and we say they ask us which is what are the options then we say these are all the options available i mean we know that and and we don't say that recommend this or that but we definitely said this is this is something that these are the choices industry or the startup ecosystem offers you at this point of time so so i covered two three different points but coming back to what you said sam is uh, definitely i think uh, a collaborative effort uh, between the startups is needed and that's where uh, some of the strengths we bring to help bring together uh, and it could be with academia also not just limited to startups to startup um so it could be startup to corporate or startup to academia and uh, yes i think that that speeds up some of the some of the process of uh, product development so uh, the uh, question um, you know that we had was you know to help uh, scale uh, all these startups or all these new technologies that are out there uh, the real question to all the hospitals and the healthcare um, companies in the ecosystem would like to know how many of you are actually part of uh, you know running clinical trials or you know uh, innovation trials uh, you know and engaging with all these startups and uh, what we'd like to leave uh, you know the the as a last note is that the more engaged we are uh, with all these startups and uh, innovation companies uh, yeah, and and uh, an opportunity for the doctors to take part in uh, these uh, trials i think uh, it it will you know speed up the whole ecosystem in terms of coming out with new products and uh, you know encourage the whole system to be more productive so with that uh, uh, sam uh, i think you, you can take yeah it. i'd like to thank a fantastic panel i think uh, this was a great uh, session avinash thanks uh, uh, but uh, on a more serious note i think for all of you startups out there i think take advice and take the help of these fantastic accelerators and incubators around the country and there now in every part of the country there are specialists there are generalists but there are folks that understand health deeply take their help that's one for all the doctors and the hospital participants out there help the startup right because if you don't start at least meeting girls you'll never get married or if you meet boys you'll <laughs> never even meet understand that the uh, entire male sex is worth spending some time with right uh so on a really serious basis my uh, suggestion is spend time with folks and learn be interested be curious and i think with that uh, we hope that you help create a better tomorrow than our yesterdays right that's really why we're here in kahotech um and i think with that thanks a lot thanks wonderful panel